I was living my life and then It happened so fast, kablam Don't know who I am, I was living my life then, kablam Kablam! It happens like that and life has changed forever. So for the next few minutes, we're going to talk about aphasia, explain what it is, how it feels, and show some methods we can use to communicate when we can't use words. This movie is intended as a guide for people who have aphasia and their loved ones in order to help them learn how to communicate with each other. Aphasia is a condition where a person's brain no longer processes language fluently. It usually happens when a brain suffers a stroke or some other trauma that damages the language center. Since no two brains or injuries are exactly alike, everybody's ability or disability is unique. But what is universal is that suddenly losing the ability to use language is devastating for both the person who has lost this ability and for those around them. In the blink of an eye, people with aphasia lose their language, their foundation. But even more disastrous, they lose their sense of who they are. If you're someone with aphasia, you've come to the right place. For your whole life, you have defined yourself by your words. You are comfortable in your identity. You've spent your whole life creating your you. But now, without words, you don't feel like that person anymore. You've had a terrible accident, but it's not like breaking a leg. This isn't going to mend and leave you exactly like you were before. But deep inside, you're still the same person. Your spirit, personality, knowledge, and sense of humor are all there. They weren't touched. You just can't get to them the way you used to. But now they will help you discover the person you will become. Before we go on, let's discuss the brain's structure. The brain is divided into two sides, the right hemisphere and the left hemisphere. Usually they work in harmony with each other like parallel processors and computers. Generally, the left side controls the right half of our body and holds the speech and math centers. The right side mostly controls the left side of the body and holds the creative and humorous part of your personality. The right side of the brain is your sensitive side, literally. This is where all your senses leave their mark. These marks are like a collage of what a specific moment looks like, sounds like, smells, tastes, and feels like. It's also home to your emotions. The right brain doesn't live by rules or definitions. Instead, it's free to imagine, dream, and be creative and artistic. So with that free spirit over on the right, Who's taking care of business? That would be the left hemisphere. Here is where thoughts are organized, filtered, and defined. The left brain takes the big picture and breaks it down to its pieces. Everything is checked out, sized up, and filed away. Here, your thoughts become the words you speak and where the words you hear are defined. The right side doesn't understand the words themselves but interprets through body language, tone of voice, and gesture. A person with aphasia may not be able to understand the words, but they might be able to tell whether or not a person is lying. Why not a quote? We're brought up to believe that words are the only way we can understand concepts. But we can also interpret music, Aww. photographs, dance, art, sports, and other kinds of nonverbal information. Mistakenly, we believe that it's speech that makes a baby intelligent and able to think. And in time, they acquire that little voice that can say simultaneously, Buy milk on the way home. I can't believe that my deadline's tomorrow. I have so much to do. Is that word spelled right? Is that my boss coming down the hall? And why does my left knee itch? That little voice is constantly describing our condition to ourselves and also communicates our needs and thoughts to others. May I have some sugar, please? Sometimes people work very hard to get that voice silenced through meditation, prayer, and other methods to attain enlightenment by directing that voice and cutting through the babble. That's fine if it is intentional. People with aphasia still have their ideas but cannot express these inner thoughts with their outer voice. When they try to talk, things don't go so well. 
They remember that they once could talk with ease and now can't. And that brings frustration, both to them and to those around them. People with aphasia are not suffering from dementia, mental retardation, mental illness, or the inability to remember. Locked inside their heads are their thoughts, intelligence, and memories. People with left brain damage may also have a weakness or paralysis on their right side, which may place them in wheelchairs and unable to use their right hands as they once did. Our challenge is to be creative in ways we communicate with people suffering from aphasia. We must afford them the same dignity and respect we give to people with words. We talk in so many ways. After all, actions speak much louder than words. And how about body language? These are nonverbal clues we send to one another when we speak. Flirting at a party, testifying in court, making excuses in social situations. In these situations, your words may be saying one thing, but your nonverbal clues can actually show the opposite. Now is the time to muster up all those nonverbal gestures and expressions and put them to good use. And here are some communication hints for friends and family. 1. Be sure you have the person's attention before you start. Minimize or eliminate background noise. Shh. 2. Try to keep your words simple. Try this. Pretend you're in a foreign country where you can't understand their language and they can't understand you. Pause frequently to allow your listener to process what you're saying. Speak slowly and gesture at the same time. Remember how much your expression communicates. It's okay, really, it's okay. You don't have to speak loudly, but try to emphasize the key words. And please don't talk down. Remember, you are speaking to an intelligent adult. <laughs> Three. People with aphasia need to let the people around them know what they'd like or need. When asking someone with aphasia a question, please try to make it in the form of a yes or no answer. One of the first things a person with aphasia needs to know is that yes means yes and no means no. It seems simple, okay. but it isn't always. If you are not understood at first, repeat your thought in different ways. Try using gestures and visual aids. Keep a pad and pencil handy. Some people with aphasia can write simple words or draw pictures to communicate. 4. When communicating with someone with aphasia, give them enough time to respond. This is called wait time, and it makes a big difference. If they don't seem to understand, use simpler phrases. There are times you may be in a situation where you have to speak on behalf of the person with aphasia. If you are, ask permission to do so first and make sure what you said is what they had in mind. Remember, you are communicating their decisions and you're not deciding for them. 5. Encourage all Hi. attempts to speak and make sure this dialogue Hi. is a pleasant experience. How are you? Smile. Use a reassuring you tone good. when you speak. Be patient, Thanks. and when words nice aren't pronounced cat. correctly, let it slide. You like my Then, cat? repeat what you think you've heard so they can confirm the meaning. 6. Once you get the gist of what the person with aphasia is saying, you can move on without getting bogged down with specific words. Ask questions about what you think they are saying. Go from the broad concept to the finer details using yes-no questions. Yes. 7. Please encourage them to be as independent as possible and avoid being overprotective. Let them attempt things on their own. 8. Birthday Whenever possible, continue normal activities. Don't keep people with aphasia away from family or friends, but try to include them whenever possible. Try to draw them in discussions and family decisions. Let them know about future events to give them something to look forward to. 9. If you can see they are getting tired or frustrated, ask them if this is important for you to know right now. Is this important right now? If it's not, let it drop until later. Later? 10. Finally, remember the person with aphasia is recovering from a major physical event. 
It's normal that they will get tired easily from this new effort to communicate. Sleep is good. It's restorative. Encourage napping. Here are some other things to consider. Sometimes people with aphasia mix up paired words. They might say yes when they mean no. Push for pull. In for out. Left for right. Repeat what you think they're trying to say so they can confirm it. Don't pretend you understand them when you don't. This will only add to the frustration. Most people with aphasia still have their sense of humor. Just make sure your jokes aren't word-dependent, but visual jokes. People with aphasia can get embarrassed or humiliated by what they consider to be their deficits. Joking about it can ease some of the tension. People with aphasia can often use automatic speech. Hello? It helps to make up a routine. How are you feeling? Fine. How was your day? Good. This is a good way to start a conversation on solid ground. And you can try singing a song together once in a while. Don't talk about the person with aphasia as if he or she weren't in the room. Talk directly to them. Make eye contact. Use nonverbal gestures. Wait for them to respond. One myth about aphasia is that there is a limited window for recovery of speech. Wherever you are in six months is all the language you'll ever have. This is not true. Some people with aphasia improve their speech years after their stroke. What's important is that you start therapy soon after the damage is done and that your progress is encouraged and celebrated. Bravo! Some people with aphasia, no matter how hard they try, will not be able to recover words again. But you can still communicate in many other ways. A person with aphasia and their family are told that he or she will probably never recover the person they were before. But now they have a chance to become the person they will be. People with aphasia can enjoy many things as much as people who can talk. Concerts, dance performances, sporting events, picnics, art museums, a day at the beach, a ride in the country, and playing cards. And there are special moments ahead as well. Learn to explore activities where you don't have to talk. Find joy in just holding hands, listening to music, sitting in a park without talking, and relish the moment. We have demonstrated a severe form of aphasia, but some people with aphasia can speak, but have difficulty understanding people who speak too quickly, or others can lose their words under stress and fatigue. Some people talk, but their words don't make sense. There are trained speech specialists who can help find the right path for your particular needs. You can find some resources at the end of this DVD. You know, if we could wrap up your speech in a pretty package and tie it with a bow and hand it back to you, we would. But there's still magic in life. And with practice and patience, you'll find it. I was living my life and then It happened so fast, kablam don't know who I am, I was living my life then, kablam Don't you recognize, don't you see It's me in here, it's me in here Don't you recognize, don't you see It's still me The words that are still in my head They just don't sound like what I said I know that green's not red but the words get stuck inside my head I tried to talk, it's not clear There's a stranger with me in here I try to be strong, but the words come out wrong Never clear And now everything takes time Have to look round my head just to find What used to be easy and breezy now it takes time The words that are still in my mind But they're just so hard to find Please won't you be kind Cause the words that are stuck inside my mind 
I'm a stranger in a strange land Folks don't know who I am They talk too fast and they don't know who I am Still in my head They just don't sound like what I said I know that green's not red But the words, they're stuck inside my head I know I'm not quite the same So instead of talking brain to brain Let's talk heart to heart That'll be our new Let's talk heart to heart, that'll be our new game. Let's talk heart to heart. Thank you.